everybody, boys and girls, men and women, LGBTQI, transgender, whoever may be listening. Welcome to another edition of Julia's Novelty Bloomers. Right, okay. Last time I was talking about great shows to watch, wasn't I? I was talking about Coronation Street, for anybody who managed to catch what I was saying. Well, here's another great show, Casualty. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's a pessimist's paradise. I mean, you just sit back and you wait for stuff to go wrong, don't you? And of course, it means you can play that game, can't you? You know, guess the accident, right? Well, that old man in the Ford Focus is driving on the wrong side of the road and he's slumped down in his seat and his very focals have slipped. Yeah, so wait for it. A cyclist comes out of nowhere. Because they always come out of nowhere, don't they, cyclists? It's like, really, you see, I think they were characters who were killed in previous episodes in RTA, and they're just ghosts. So get me, RTA, down with the paramedics. So, what do we think? Massive pilot, lorries pirouetting in the air, people screaming, steam coming out of the top of people's heads. Nope. Very focal, turns a funny colour, drives into a lay-by, passes out. That's great, isn't it? Casualty. It's like Jeremy Beadle, but with bedpans. Another one, right? Man climbs a ladder. Well, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? He's going to fall off. Sometimes, Newton, I love you. And he does fall off, but not before he's looked through the bedroom window and seen a woman in naughty lingerie. Hence, that's the reason he falls off. Anyway, so he falls off his ladder. The woman who thinks she recognises him from somewhere, has a heart attack, and guess what? They both end up in A&E, in adjacent beds. And, of course, they have to fight, don't they? Because people in casualty are always fighting. And they're fighting in this occasion because the woman he was lusting after turns out to be his mother, who abandoned him when he was six. And then, in order to break up the fight, in comes Charlie Fairhead to break them up. Although he doesn't actually do anything. He's like the Edward Woodward of the NHS, isn't he? He just stands there, a grey wall of calm. He doesn't even say, now stop it. He's actually been dead, you know, for about 20 years. He died in 1990. And they got the taxidermist in. And no one has noticed. He's on wheels, isn't he? On a hospital trolley, and they just wheel him in. Then we have the delectable Connie Beecham, right? Now there's a really sensible person. She's going to work a 12-hour shift in A&E, right? So what does she put on her feet? Does she pull on a pair of flat, rubber-soled, sensible shoes so that she does not slip in other patients' vomit? No, she does not. She pulls on the Kurt Geiger design of six-inch stilettos. Completely sensible, isn't it? So, I have a scenario running through my head, right? A patient comes in with a mystery pain, right? Because it's always mysterious pain in casualty, isn't it? Because after you've played guess the accident, you can play guess the illness, can't you? And they always come in with a troubling pain, don't they? Um, and they end up being diagnosed with a terminal illness, which has no connection whatsoever to the terminal pain. Sorry, the pain. <laughs> um, anyway, patient collapses. Connie Beecham running to another patient, slides in some vomit, treads on said patient, her stiletto pierces the patient's duodenum. See, there's a nice complicated medical word, duodenum, isn't it? Duodenum, duodenum. Pronounce it the right way, you have a live pop band. Anyway, Connie then has to perform an eight hour operation standing on one leg in order to remove her stiletto from said patient's duodenum. Because it would have been sensible to remove her other shoe. But no, Connie Beecham, not sensible. Or maybe she was just trying to fit in a bit of Pilates. Thank you for listening to another edition of Julia's Novelty Bloomers. Catch you soon. Bye bye.